today we're going to do something that maybe I've done with you before, maybe not, but we're going to do some paper weaving. And I have some materials here that I'm going to teach you two different ways that you can try paper weaving at home. Um, first of all, I wanted to tell you that in the next couple of weeks I am going to be refurbishing my loom and go back to fabric weaving. So I'm going to show you that and then I'm also going to document the process so you guys see just how cloth is made and things like that. This is my loom at home. Um, as you can see, it's fairly large. In the course of the next couple of weeks, I have planned on replacing all of the metal and movable parts and that way she'll be ready to go. This loom is just about as old as I am. so. It's about time her parts are replaced, just like mine. You'll see there's things like a beater, there's things like heddles here, and harnesses. All these things go into making fabric or making tapestries, carpets, whatever you want. So I'll be documenting this process and show you how things are and how things go. It's probably the most Discipline thing I've ever done in my life weaving and Maybe that's why I just decided to choose other things to experiment with so it's not so disciplined Let's see. Okay back to paper weaving Okay, there are two ways you can do paper weaving there are ones that you can do by taking two Pieces of paper um one gets cut into strips, leaving space at the top and the bottom. So, as you can see, things move around a lot. And then you can go in with your strips and slowly weave them in the second piece of paper into the first piece of paper. I'm going to do a pattern that's called a tabby or a 50-50 weave. That means half of the paper is covered and half is not covered. So it'll be under, over, 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 as you go take the whole strip across the page. I like to say that to myself as I'm working only because in a way, it's more or less like a chant, and it's really very relaxing, and it also keeps you from making mistakes. If you don't want, care about making mistakes, there are no rules in this. You can just try what you want. So first, I am going to take my whole piece of paper. I go through magazines at home or advertisements. Ask an adult at home what's one thing that, or two or three things that would be okay if you cut up. It could even be old drawings that you've done that you really just don't like anymore. Because when you do paper weaving, you're just pleasantly surprised. So I'm going to kind of hold the fold in the center. I'm going to use scissors. And I'm going to leave a space at the bottom. If I don't have scissors, you can even tear. What I like about the tears is they're not a sharp straight edge like the scissor. So it gives you a whole different feel. So for this one, I am going to do half in a tear and then I'll go back to scissors. So you kind of get the idea of what you can do. You don't have to be even about it. They can be bigger in size, so I'll make this one a little larger. But note, I am still keeping that space at the bottom. So it sets up like a little portable loom. All right. Here it goes. Hmm. Was it in second grade that you guys made paper lanterns? I think it was. So it's almost like when you make a paper lantern making your loom. Because if you notice, I could make... I could attach these two here and make a little lantern. But we're not doing lanterns, we're doing paper weaving. So we'll get on with it. I have already cut up some strips. Again, I go through magazines. Uh, 
print ads in the paper, newspaper works, just about anything will work. Color paper would work if you have it. I'm trying to do projects that I think you might have materials at home or could readily find them. So nobody could be left out of what we're doing. So I'm going to take this strip and I'm going to go over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over. Then I'm going to use my hands and I'm going to push those strips down to the bottom. And, okay. My first piece. Take another strip. I started this one on an over, so I'm going to do an under. So it'll be under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over, done. If you get lost about where you should be, that's okay too. But if you look back to the last strip you filled in, this one was over, this one will be under, the next one will start with an over. It's always the opposite of what you've done before. What I love about paper weaving is you never know when you combine two images what you're going to come up with. Sometimes, okay, over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over. Tap it, bring it down. It's hard, I notice, with the pieces that I've ripped because sometimes the strip gets caught on the edge and it might just take a little extra effort on your part. But, here we have it. Hmm. Okay. Under, over, under, over. Under, over, under, over, under. Bring it down. What I'm seeing here is the edges where I ripped are starting to wave. That's because they weren't cut um, evenly, and I'm loving that. But what I also am noticing on the back is I'm getting something else. And sometimes I'm more presently surprised about what happens on the back of these than on the front. So we're going to put this aside for now, and I'm going to show you some other things you can do. If you don't want to cut the paper, you can always just work with strips. So you would start by either ripping or cutting a number of strips and having them just off to the side so you can start working together. I'll take these. I'm going to put out two going top to bottom. And I'm going to take one here, starting in the middle and going over and under. My second strip, I went over that one, so I'm going to go under this one. And what you have to do, boys and girls, is push the strips together so they make, a, um, so they touch one another, and that would make a strong piece of fabric if you were making fabric or, in this case, paper. I'm going to add now a new top piece, and I went over, under, so I have to go the opposite of what I did the last time. Hmm. Okay, let's try 
right this. What I like about this kind of freeform method is you don't have a picture that you're filling in. You can just kind of choose colors that you like. I'm going to use tape right now to tape my little pieces together so I can pick it up and show you what it's going to look like. And it looks like this. And then you would continue on as I have done here. The weave gets, again, you're starting from the center and working out. And you can keep going or you can stop at any point where you're like, hmm, I really like that. Oh, check out the back. There are some really fun things happening there. Or you could stop at one part and just say, huh, I kind of like that arrangement. You can either glue or tape it to your paper, but it's still weaving. There are shapes, uh, pieces of different widths, so it, that makes a kind of fun arrangement. Here I've gotten a little bit further along on my strip weaving. And as you can see, there's some really fun things happening. And check out the back. <coughs> Love it. Or here I've taken two pictures and woven them together. I use the method of cutting the strips and leaving a space, but you can still see the image. Up around here I changed the pattern, it wasn't over under over under. I went uh, in a more of a twill pattern which is up over two under two and that changes. And you have to count a lot with that one, but I know you can do that too. And again, the backs are great as well. One more thing I want to share with you. Shapes. You can, in this one, I found a circle picture in the magazine that I said, huh, I wonder what that would look like. So I just cut strips to the circle. What I had to do then was found another picture that I kind of liked and said, huh, I cut almost the same size circle as the one I made the strips in because it has to work that way because you'll see the edges have changed along the sides. So you have to work with something that is going to be around the same shape. So I just cut the second circle into four pieces and wove them in and left this one up top. I'm loving this, but wait till you see the back. Ta-da. Just as pleasantly surprised with the back as I was the front. So there are two different ways that you can do paper weaving. Just with strips, or with a picture already started. So, if you have any questions, you can email me, or you can use YouTube and look up paper weaving. That would help you as well. But, for now, go ahead, give it a try. Don't forget to ask the adult at home, what can I cut up? Because it's always a good thing to do when you have scissors in your hand and you are looking for materials at home. Paper bags work, construction paper works. I'm sure everybody has some paper at home that they can cut up. So, I hope you had fun spending some time with me learning about weaving. I hope in the next couple of weeks to have some thread ready to go on the loom so I can show you exactly how that whole process goes. And for now, I hope everyone's safe. Don't forget to be kind. And don't forget to be creative. See you again. Bye.